So welcome back to Suncorp Stadium. Seat by seat, it has filled. Now almost to capacity at 52,000 people. Origin 89, 44th Origin to be played at this great ground, whether you call it Lang Park or Suncorp Stadium. The 28th series is about to continue, a series that could well be decided tonight, right here, right now. Queensland, of course, rewrote the record books last year, winning four series in a row. And tonight, the champion side gets the chance to break their own record and write yet another chapter in this mesmerising story. It's a story of origin, with all its twists and turns, with all its omens, all its hard luck stories, and all its unforgettable memories. Kurt Gidley will start the game from the bench, but he captains the Blues for the fifth time. His on-ground duties, whilst he's not there, will be taken over by Trent Barrett, the number six, playing in his 10th Origin game. Tonight, the Blues face an almost impossible task if they're to survive and take the series to Sydney for the decider. As we come in from the chopper above Suncorp, Michael Ennis in the nine, Mitchell Pearce in the seven. On paper, it might look as though a win for the Blues is more improbable than the alternative. But this is origin. And I think Gus Gould and Peter Serling and Brad Fiddler and the panel, Wally Lewis, they said winning in the face of adversity, winning when they say you can't, that is origin football. So the players assembling now for the rendition of the national anthem. You're in for a, a treat here. A 12-year-old, as Darren Lockyer takes them out. Is it his last origin on home soil? The great man, we ran a package on him in the lead up to this match, 33 years of age, 32nd origin. And of course his 12th series, he missed one through injury. Debuted almost to the day 15 years ago. I was saying there's a young 12 year old going to sing the anthem tonight. He's got a future as bright and as big as this stadium itself. His name is Stralin McCallum. And there doesn't even seem to be the slightest hint of nerves or butterflies. The Maroons away to his right, just assembling. The Blues waiting and linking arms now for young Stralin to sing the national anthem of Australia. Gentlemen, please remain upstanding for a moment's silence in remembrance of Jacob Morland and Darren Smith, who were tragically killed last week while fighting for their country in Afghanistan.
our thoughts and prayers are with their families and with all our troops at home and abroad. And ladies and gentlemen, please thank Stralan McCallum. Yeah, Jacob Moreland and Darren Smith. A moment of respect for a couple of our fallen heroes in Afghanistan. And this telecast reaching the troops overseas. We welcome you and we thank you. As the players find their places on the field, Darren Lockyer, as I said, is this his last origin on home soil? He seems to think that maybe there's another, another series in those legs, which would take him through to break the all-time record of games played by Alan Langer at 34. He equals Mal Meninga tonight at 32. I like the national anthem rendition and Strahl and McCallum put a jersey on him tonight. Nothing phasing he got through that the way he did. Eighth origin for Tony Yarcher, six for Shane Hayne. And so there it is. Is this the decider? From Suncorp Stadium, we'll know in about an hour and a half. And this is Michael Wayman, 114 kilo of him. Put to ground about five metres away from his own line taken back by the Queensland defence. Four of the forwards were up there to meet him, just eight metres out from his line. So fast was the forward chase off the kickoff. And so it goes to Paul Gallen. Really a front rower in a back rower's body, you might say. And now for Nathan Heinmarsh, and they drive into that sternum area, which obviously would be heavily padded for Heinmarsh. Taken by Fide. And Mitchell Pearce clears from inside the 20 metre line. He cleared early, he kicked on four, and Slater is back on his 20 metre line. And immediately goes away to Darius Boyd, and Boyd, who's got a success rate at origin of around about 75 80%, five from six games he's been involved in, and they've won, as is the case with this man, Israel Folau, the same percentage ratio of victories for Israel. 35 metres out then from their own line. They're guarding the southern end of the ground. Shellington goes up strong. Penalty goes Queensland. The Blues up inside the 10 in particular. And in fact, there might have been a high shot there from Gallon. They've gone in here. Well, it hasn't escalated. I'm sure you'll find that Paul Gallon came in with a swinging arm. Two other Blues forwards in there helping out there was a previous play with Israel Folau getting a little bit of a facial on the ground it's just all fairly harmless stuff and it was the next hit up <laughs> Israel didn't mind where the penalty was awarded Cameron Smith then finding the line Queensland will get the first chance to attack that try line 10 of their 17 have scored tries only five of the New South Wales men have scored tries in their origin careers Harrison put it through to Thurston. Thurston went away then to Nate Miles. Two. And Miles will play two. the ball in the opening exchanges of Origin 2 from Suncourt. Miles slow to give up, or was he held down, in fact, by Heinmarsh? Lockie sends a pass inside for Thiday. And Sam Thiday will play the ball. Ten metres out from the Blues line, down at the southern end, the Caxton Street end of the ground. Then for Lockyer, there was a decoy run, it went back to Slater, then there was another decoy, then to Thurston, a double pump from Thurston, and uh, they found G.I., they have found Inglis, he goes for the corner, and Greg Inglis has scored, Greg Inglis scores his uh, tenth, his tenth origin try. Well, it's been a great start from Queensland, not just on the scoreboard, the kickoff was a beauty, it went as high as it did long, that forced New South Wales to kick after four or five tackles they'd only picked up 20 meters and look at the winger here Joel Monaghan on the right wing come racing in if the cutout pass is shown there to Jonathan, Jonathan Thurston Darius Boyd scores he ends up throwing to Greg Inglis who crosses in the corner did beautifully to get the ball down Greg Inglis He's certainly been the cynosure of most eyes. Eyes peering in on the controversy that has been the lead up to this Origin match tonight. He scores his 10th Origin try. Four grand finals he's played it. So Greg Inglis scores the first try at exactly the third minute of Origin 2. 
And Jonathan Thurston will attempt conversion of the 23-year-old's try from the touchline. 21 metres out. It was a beautifully executed uh, try. Everything worked. And then, of course, New South Wales, the outside backs came in and aided the try. Well done, Greg Inglis. Well done, Queensland. First and then from touch. 21 out. Coming around too much. So Jonathan Thurston fails to convert the opening try at the third minute scored by Greg Inglis. They used this play in Origin 1. And in the wet conditions, they couldn't get it from the right-hand side of the field. They went to the right-hand side, then switched back to the left. And the play broke down there where Thurston had the ball in the wet conditions. New South Wales didn't read that out of Origin 1. In Origin 2, they come racing up, take no one, and Inglis muscles his way into the corner. So, the Blues go through the rigmarole of starting the second session if you measure sessions by tries, and they didn't expect to be doing it this soon. As uh, Matthew Scott lumbers out with the ball 15 metres away from down at the Milton Street end of the... Oh, Cameron Smith's leg went underneath the body of his tackler, Wayman. He's OK. Lockyer got the ball away. Thayday is outside the 30-metre line and driving with those legs, refusing to go down. Never say die attitude from Friday typifies the Queensland attitude to origin football. There's Willie Tonga. And he'll play the ball right on halfway. Cameron Smith, a crush now, finding Darren Lockyer. And it goes high and down and taken by Jared Hayne. In the fluorescent yellow boots tonight. He'll play the ball on the 20-meter line. And Trent Barrett, a dummy half, got a sloppy ball away. That was good work by Joel Monaghan, though. And Monaghan will play the ball. Three matches only this year at NRL since the broken thumb for Joel Monaghan. So he's come in on a very light preparation. This is Bo Scott, the dragon that Wayne Bennett said. He'll handle origin. He's the type you need. And now for Gallon to charge it up. Seven or eight metres from halfway. The man from Cronulla as Ennis kicks to clear. And he gets it down into the corner. But look at that. The fly from Slater. And then a quick pass snapped away to Darius Boyd, who'll play at 18 away from his own line. Yeah, the idea was good, Michael Ennis. I'd like to see him kick from dummy half, take a bit of pressure off the halves. And he just hit that one a little bit too close to the fullback. If you can find open space, it makes the kick so much more beneficial, much longer to get it back, as David Shillington takes it forward. Picks up some tough metres, 35 out from his own line. 111 kilos of him standing at six foot five as it goes from Lockyer and then goes on to Thurston, uh, Thayday I should say. And Thayday will play it on the eastern side of the ground, almost on the halfway line as it comes to Lockyer. He just drifts across, turns the ball inside. Nate Miles is there. Wonderful record at Origin. I think he's competed in 12 and won nine. As Lockyer then stabs a kick down into the corner. Monaghan watching it, hoping, praying that it goes dead, and it does. So it'll come out of the 20-metre line for the restart. Yeah, just got the bad bounce there, accelerated towards the dead ball line. And straight away, the combination of Lockyer and Thurston just settling in nicely. When he wants to kick, Darren comes in the first receiver. They just complement uh, compliment each other very, very well. They know when to go into first or to second. New South Wales work it out now. Brett White, standing start, does well. He's the man from the high country. The last time he wore this blue jumper onto Suncorp was very much at the head of affairs with that fight with Stephen Price. The ball's gone across to Matt Cooper now. Back from that injury, which he suffered in Origin 1. And now across a floating pass. It didn't look to have a lot of urgency. Oh, he, Wayman has taken the shoulder of Shellington. And uh, that's 111 on 104D, and that was quite an impact. As it goes to Bo Scott, little run around there from... Um, Mitchell Pearce, he grubbers a kick in, and Slater was there. Attracted to it like a missile. Now, this, this is the hit. Now, this is the origin hit. Bang, Shillington gets his left shoulder into Wayman. He's opposite now, this is get that in here. Oh, Inglis! Inglis picked up by Bo Scott and driven into the ground. And they have a little bit of a disagreement going on in back play. Scott and Inglis. And Scott giving away something like seven kilos there and about nine centimetres in height. The ball going down into the corner. Hayne will bring it back out of the Caxton Street end. So Hayne at fullback for the first time in Sky Blue. 
He was a long way out of position there, Jared Hayne. He's really got to watch that Cameron Smith left foot out of dummy half, particularly trying to pick up the 40-20. He really had to scramble to make ground on that ball. Nate Miles has gone in and made a shot on Joel Monaghan, but Miles is the one that's come out second best. Yeah, I think you'll see a head clash here. Well, not about a clash, but his head has, has hit the, the New South Wales player and he reeled straight out of it. He was in trouble straight away. <laughs> he is a tough hombre, this one. Straight to his feet, jogs back. He'll get up. Won't worry him. He, is a... yeah. he, he lives half his life in concussion. <laughs> he don't care. Played his 100th grade game just three, the other day. Eight miles. He's only scored three tries in his life. Hasn't scored at Origin. Now for Weyman to go up again. He stopped the field. He has indeed, Peter. He's had a glorious start. Oh, Weyman, is he wobbling? Is there a white towel? Is there a towel? Weyman still wobbling. As Mitchell Pierce goes away to Trent Barrett. Has gone on to Matt Cooper. Trying to get it on the outside of Tonga. The kick comes off the boot of Morris. at Lancer. On round sweetly for Slater. And Billy the Kid down the right side. Inside four. Inside 30, 25 out his tackle. Billy Slater. Now, Israel Folau. And he'll play the ball 20, uh, 15 metres out from the Blues line. It's unbelievable, isn't it? This is Origin. Now Slater for Lockyer. He goes back to Thurston. Thurston short to Harrison. And Ashley Harrison. The lock forward plays it. Lockyer quickly away. Thurston, the ball knocked down by the Blues. I think Monaghan knocked on. That was a, a try saving knock on there for John Monaghan. They are giving them all sorts of trouble down this left hand side. Bo Scott, his first origin game. Joel Monaghan has only played a handful of games in NRL this year. This is the far side, the little chip over from Brett Morris. Billy Slater gets the ball. And have a look, Nathan Hindmarsh. This is why he is back in the New South Wales side. Leads the cover defence. And that's twice now in the game. As the ball comes down the short side here, Monaghan, he had to take the ball. He was nowhere in position to make a tackle. And he was lucky it fell into his own arms after that. Look at that, they're so short. He'd have scored for sure in the corner there, Darius Boyd. But that's twice now that the Blues have sort of got half outside Queensland and their first instinct is to kick. But here they are, going away to Lockyer and going wider onto Tonga. A float behind for Lamb. Try six. Six tries for Israel from seven appearances on the big stage of origin. And another flying start for Queensland here. They are on top and rolling. And defensively out there. Look at the two minds. He doesn't know whether to stay out or come in, Brett Morris. And Matt Cooper misses the tackle. Israel for now strides over comfortably in the corner. There he is, the 21-year-old. Dally M Rookie of the Year in 07. That was his debut year. 21 tries in 27 matches in that same debut season. Israel Folau at the 12th minute has scored the second Queensland try. His sixth origin try, his seventh origin game. Rookie of the year in 07 when he debuted. 21 tries that season from 27 matches. And he rocketed to rugby league stardom since that debut match of his for Melbourne against West Tigers at Olympic Park in the March of 07. Thurston has got that. 24 metres out. Cowboy with the kick is coming around and he's got it from near the touchline. Talking of touchline, Wally Lewis. Well, one of the most important things you've got to remember in defence is you must dictate terms to the ball carrier. That wasn't the case with Brett Morris on the Keno replay. You can see he was simply standing still. Queensland had the opportunity then to throw the ball wide and an opportunity for Israel for Lau. They've got to try and be a little bit stronger in their defensive lines. Lockyer drifts across. Just have a look at it. Morris, well, he really could have stayed with his winger on that occasion. It would have been a benefit to New South Wales. So the Blues... 
replicating something that happened just nine minutes earlier restarting the game in answer to a try this time a converted try it is 10-0 in favor of the maroons as they surge on now very much with the smell of five championships in a row and a record-breaking five topping what they achieved last year as Lockyer, oh, he takes a dunk argue there from Michael Ennis, smallest man on the field, as it goes on to Tonga, and Tonga is just into Blues territory, and it comes away for Cameron Smith out at first receiver, and he puts up a high midfield bomb, and Barrett takes the ball, Harrison was on him very, very quickly, but Barrett plays the ball, 25 out, Hayne comes in tries to get this this vehicle of the Blues moving in the appropriate direction. Played inside the 30-meter line. Bone Scott, he runs into Greg Inglis. He's able to get the ball away. Well done, Scott. Well done for the Dragon. And now for Wayman, another of them. Oh, it's a great set, too. They've had words again, Greg Inglis and Bo Scott. What a battle on this side of the field as Jared Hayne finds Matt Cooper, tries to stand up Tommy. Can't do so. So play just now into Queensland's area 10 nil in favor of Queensland started a raging hot favorite to put the series to bed here tonight Barrett's kick is high Slater's underneath it all oh, Mitchell Pierce looked to take him but then the referee desisted and Slater plays the ball Pierce in fact he didn't go on with the tackle he put his arms out and sort of fell out of it that was my view on it. Well, he's got to be penalised, even if you, you make contact like that. I know it wasn't dangerous tackle, and he, he pulled out. But he still touched the man. You can't when he's in mid-air as Cameron Smith, again, right up the middle, physically right on top Queensland at the moment. Only had to make the two changes, Queensland, but one of them, possibly the most valuable player in the game today, Cameron Smith. Maybe not the most brilliant, but certainly valuable. As the ball is played, he sweeps it away, and Lockyer, Lockyer kicks it in, hits him hard. Did he get him late? Payne takes the ball. Payne, he might have caught one a little bit high. And uh, that's the hit on Lockyer, and as watching the pocket referee, he talked for a long time. Well, it's a penalty again. You can't tackle the kicker unless you make a tackle, and that means you have to envelop him with your arms going around. You can't shoulder charge him. That's David Shillington coming over the top with the highest tackle. But play on. Let's get into it. That's Nathan Hine, Marsh, 29 out. Friday, the chief tackler, Lockyer, doing some cleaning up. Ben Cray with a run. Repeating that Nathan Highmarsh started the game. Trent Waterhouse will come from the bench. As Mitchell Pierce goes across to Barrett, he snaps a ball on the inside. And that, uh, that player, in fact, is Waterhouse, who's out there now at the halfway line. Barrett back to Hayne. And Hayne. Again, feeling a shoulder. They're pummeling Hayne, but he keeps coming back looking for more. It was Nate Miles that time. 40 metres away from the Queensland line. Ball to be played now by Brett White. And it's gone onto the boot of Mitchell Pierce, down into the corner. Darius Boyd's underneath it. Boyd then, taken by his opposite number, or his opposite man, Joel Monaghan. 10 nil after 17 minutes, it's been all the Maroons with Greg Inglis now running it out. And a two-man New South Wales tackle put him down inside 20. Well, in all honesty, Rabbits, when Queensland have the ball, it looks like a training session. It just looks like they're going perfunctorily through their drills, as calm as you like, and getting no pressure from the New South Wales defence. The Blues have really got to get up and make a statement here shortly, or the Maroons will run away with this. Coaching staff for New South Wales. Anxiously watching on. Oh. And Cameron. No, it's out on the fall. Just there's that 40-20 that attempt that Phil was talking about earlier. A little shake of the head. That looked really good in flight. And one of the, the areas that New South Wales, I know, have worked on for a period of time is to draw a square around that play-the-ball area and stop Cameron Smith getting out. But physically, they're not getting there in time to do so. See Laurie Daly clapping his hands there, and I guess he's echoing the thoughts that I'm having at the moment. The Blues need to turn this into a turning point. You get a break like that in origin, now the Blues have got to set up camp down Queensland's end of the field and not come back until they've got points. And you can see the former Blues skipper there sensing 
this is an opportunity where good players have got to stand up. So the Blues come up with the scrum, and Bo Scott it is, who's grappled to the ground just outside the 30-metre line. Ennis it was who gave this ball to Gallon. Gallon still going, still going, and now succumbing to a three-man, or in fact a four-man Maroon tackle. It'll be played in centre ground, 25 out from the line. It's gone through Pierce and gone to Barrett, and Barrett goes back to Hay and across to Cooper now. He and Tonga, Tonga and uh, Cooper. Eventually the tackle is made by Lockyer. And played on the eastern side of the ground. Morris for Hayne and Hayne to Heinmarsh. And Heinmarsh who has scored one origin try in 17 matches played. It's come to Mitchell Pears now, in and away, and he gets the ball out the back to keep it alive with another phase to come. Heinmarsh was there to pick it up. He ducked under Cameron Smith. He tried to side, uh, sidestep Nate Miles and did, but actually Harrison makes the tackle. Now to Barrett, puts a little kick in. Monaghan's high. Ball comes down. It's with, I think, Barrett, is it? He's in the touch anyway. Great online defence by Queensland. Great defence. Great defence back on the inside. Pats all around on the back, and rightly so. Eight miles involved again. Billy Slater was there. It's a little chip kick. Joel Monaghan deliberately tries to knock it back, and Barrett comes in on the fly, but they grabbed him, three of them, and threw him over the sideline. The New South Wales coach and support staff right. got a little bit excited, but to no avail. So Harrison runs at the leading shoulder of Hindmarsh, and he enjoys putting him down. Ennis mixing it up with them as well in defence. And now run for Matthew Scott. And he'll play the ball, the youngster from long reach, just inside the 20-meter line. Back for Cameron Smith. Ball comes across. Nate Miles takes the punishment. Dealt by the New South Wales. Tackle that time from Trent Waterhouse. And now it's with Smith and has gone to Thurston on the short side. And they go short for Harrison. And they're almost out to their own 40-meter line now. 10-0 tries at the third and the 12th minute. And so to the right side for Thurston, Ben Hannant has come onto the ground now. And uh, Hannant from the Canterbury Club, he will play the ball eight metres on his side of halfway. Smith kicking out of dummy half. This one looks like it's too wide, it is. Smith twice now in successive kicks. He's put it out on the full. Yeah, an action replay. The Blues have got to see this again as another opportunity. One thing I noticed when that kick went up into the corner that Joel Monaghan tapped back was the amount of Maroon cover defence coming across. They all come to the game on every play. It's remarkable. You don't see them when they're not needed, but at some stage tonight someone will be needed and there'll be a Maroon jersey there. They're great at it. This is White. And Ennis, Wade, Pierce, Decoy, Cray, Hayne, a handle, Cooper, an in-ball, Morris, the run. Tried! Oh, he was looking to get it around and back to Cooper, but he was monstered over there by Israel Falau. Played outside the 20-metre line, the Blues with a chance. Pierce to Cray, and Cray in the tackle, the ball goes to ground. Pierce is able to pick it up. No restart of the tackle count, and it'll be played over there by Matt Cooper, 25 away from the line. Fourth tackle goal. Luke O'Donnell has gone into the game. Pierce gets it away. Barrett is with the ball. He gives it out to Jared Hay. He gives it on. It's with Bo Scott. He turns it back to Jared Hay. Puts out one hand. Gets it on to Pierce. Pierce now runs across the 20 metre line. Gives the ball to Gallon. Bleeding from the right eye. Looks around. Hasn't gone to ground with it. Hayne bats on. Gone to Waterhouse. Waterhouse on the 10 metre line is tackled. And five have gone to the Blues. Brilliant attack. Hot potato football. Scott to Barrett. Barrett, big kick across the ground. Cooper's underneath it, but so is Falau. And Israel has come down and credited with the mark. This is Tonga. Well, there's a sign in New South Wales not to kick that wide. You don't put the ball up in the air anywhere around Israel Falau. Go to the posts, come to this side of the field. A lot of movement there, ball movement from New South Wales. You won't out jump the number five. Don't give him an opportunity. Played by Hannon. And here's Miles. Almost to the 30 metre line. Yeah, got a swing. Still, he's, he's taken another one, I yeah, think. Yeah, Paul Gallon, right? Another swinging arm. Well, it looked like a solid shot. Nate Miles was groggy prior to the tackle. Paul Gallon, there's a face that says innocence written all over it. He's not giving too much away. 
Let's have a look at this. Oh, Crap. yeah, Gallon. Certainly a clever one right on the draw with Nate Miles, so he's taking a real buffeting Nate. Yeah, and it's, it's an unnecessary penalty, and this is, with all due respect to Paul Gallon, one of the things that has people questioning his role in the team. To give away a penalty like that when you've just had back-to-back -back sets down Queensland's end, lets them out cheaply. He's on retort, a penalty to the opposition, cheap ground, an extra set of six, and into attacking zones. You don't need it. You've got to play with your head. Queensland were thinking of... In fact, they're taking him off now, Nate Miles. So this will be a free interchange. Yeah, beauty. Dave Taylor's on. <laughs> yeah, so we get rid of get rid of Nate Miles, and now they bring on the 18-and-a-half yeah, stone gets, cannonball. It from, gets easier now. From Rockhampton. And they've got the 16 going out there as well. Can he play football, the 16? Neville Costick, and I'll tell a man he can. He tackles quite well, Ray. I wouldn't be running anywhere near him as Queensland now. We start inside the opposition territory again. Darren Lockett close to the play and Ben Hennett back on the inside. So Hennett picked up and spiralled onto his back, mainly by Waterhouse. Oh, Costigan ran into the shoulder of O'Donnell. Luke O'Donnell, the cowboy, the former Tiger, out there again at Origin. And this is actually Harrison just inside the 30 metre line. Tidied up by Hindmarsh and O'Donnell as Nate Miles has aided from the ground. Now for Lockyer, then for Thurston. Here comes the opening again on the outside. Here's Slater. Slater's inside the 10. And eventually, desperation wins the day for Brett Morris. There's a massive divot in the ground over there as it comes across from Thurston and goes through Lockyer back to Costigan. Costigan's in the middle of the ground. He's 11 metres out. The problem has been on this left side, but they're going back to the right side. Thurston for Thide. He gets it away for Big Dave Taylor. Five metres out from the line, and they show him the sideline. Changeover will be called. Well, they dodged the bullet there, the Blues. But every time Queensland go wide from the long side of the field, not so much down short sides, but from the long side, look at this. Look how they go up past the ball. Now, I haven't seen Morris or Cooper defend like that at the club level ever. It happened in the first try when Monaghan went racing up past the ball. In the second try, Cooper and, and, and Morris got themselves out of position and didn't trust each other. And they're running up with your arms flailing past the ball. It, it, it's not defence. So the Blues coming out to the 30 metre line this time through Paul Gallon, who's on report for a high shot on late miles. And Barrett's kick is quite good. In fact, his kicking game has been quite tidy. But this man always seems to be somewhere in the proximity of where the ball lands. Well, that's a great kick from Trent Barrett. Third tackle. It was a surprise tactic. Chase was good. Now you want them to have quick play the balls. Get off them. You want them to waste tackles down here, the Queensland team. As Darius Boyd comes in to help out. Oh, Ooh. Boyd picked up and that had started something. Luke O'Donnell was the tackler. Darius Boyd picked up, driven into the ground. And they've come in from all directions. Wow. Now the punches are flying in there. Ben Hammond's involved. Darren Locke is in the middle of a trying to separate players. Friday and Cray have singled away. Wow. O'Donnell and Taylor. Oh, he's putting his head forward. Yeah, there's been headbutts in there as well. Now they go in again. Listen. And Taylor and Monaghan, they get involved. He's in all sorts of trouble here, Luke O'Donnell on a couple of fronts. I might be getting a tap on the head from Trent Waterhouse here, but that man with the ripped jersey is in trouble. Take him back. Take him all back, mate. I'm asking you to do that. Derek! Derek! Ten. 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 Take him all back. Derek! And that's what started it. Lifted into a dangerous position. Darius Boyd. And then this eruption. Well, I think it's a send-off offence. I think he's driven, and I think there's a headbutt later on. Yeah, I've already got the penalty for that. That's on report. Yeah, I got it. Hey, on, hey. Yeah. Well, this is going to get ugly. Okay. 
Bill has them to in the box upstairs. Yeah, you've just got their looks on their faces, haven't you? You can see yeah. there's a big decision coming. Well, they're not sure that they've mentioned Hey, Don, they've also mentioned Paul Gallen. Trent Barrett being called out now along with Luke O'Donnell. The clock hasn't been stopped. It's still ticking down. Not that we're too concerned about that. My first concern was for Darius Boyd, but he looks OK. Yeah, clock stop now. I did before, but yes. Yeah, there's a headbutt there from Luke O'Donnell and Dave Taylor. Left! Left! Hey. Ooh. Holding the jumper and a left uppercut at the same time. I don't want to hear from you. The tackle is dangerous, right? The incident's going to go on the court, right? You need to calm down. Well, it's very lucky. Wow. It's, a, it's a penalty, and O'Donnell, in the view of many people, lucky to be still there. I think there's been, what, three send-offs only in, in origin history? Yeah. Well, it, it won't be a fourth if that's not a send-off. Now, the incident's on the court. He needs now to calm his football side down, and so do you. Okay? We've got a long way to go. And if you remember back to the last game last year, Queensland got a penalty out of a fracker in front of their own post in the dying moments. Lockyer kicked it out and said, kick down field and let's give them a little bit back. Let's see what the Queensland skipper does here. When tensions are high like this, you want to be without the ball. Even though Queensland have got a penalty, I wouldn't be surprised if they kick it out and kick it again and do a bit of whacking of their own. Well, this time Cameron Smith is supposed to find the line and he does. And the free has taken 33 metres out, and Ben Hammond is taking it ahead. And Mitchell Pearce was the man there first, with Ben Cray and Matt Cooper doing some housekeeping. Now to Thide, a show and a go from Thide. He ran at high mass, and he almost makes it to halfway. Ben Cray getting involved in the tackle with his second row partner. And now Neville Costigan will play the ball seven or eight metres into New South Wales territory. So, two tries to Queensland at the third and the twelfth minute of the game. They lead 10-0, and here's Taylor up the middle. And that's a good tackle from Ennis. This mountain of a man running at full pace, and Ennis took him low. And uh, Waterhouse is in there, a dummy half, also involved in the tackle. Cameron Smith will play the ball. Last tackle, Slater, right side play, Thurston. Measures his kick, it's high, it's down, and oh, Israel, Israel got to push in the back off the ball. They get another Queensland, get another penalty. Matt Cooper has pushed for in the back off the ball. Well, he just wasn't going to give him a jump. He saw his man one-on-one -on -one with Morris and thought, no, at 10-0, I cannot afford you to get there and catch that ball. So he's taken the odds to it. If the scores are level or nil all, maybe he lets Morris have his leap, but Cooper's made a decision there at 10-0. I can't give you a chance. See, some, uh, some people might think that uh, you can jostle and shoulder and, and put the hip in if you're in pursuit of the football, but Matt Cooper was not in pursuit of the football. You can't change your line by 10 or 15 No, minutes, you're right. No. But, uh, it's worthy of pointing out because... You can when you're playing for sheep stations. Uh, exactly right. This is origin, baby. Thank you, Farmer Brown. Now it's gone across for Billy Slater. Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid, did he get it down? He said he forward did. Forward pass, forward pass. Right? Forward pass has been called by Hayes. Wow. Now it's starting to overheat again. Well, we don't have to do anything. You can just sit back and watch this. I've got my feet up on the dashboard. We're in cruise control in the commentary box because all the action is down there. This is not an easy pass to throw. That's going backwards, that's, that's surely. That's fine. Look, surely look at the that's... hands. Look at the hands. The only thing that can determine a forward pass is where the hands are facing because the ball physically has to go where the hands are facing. That's back. That's back. That's a beautiful pass. Wonderful pass. It was his ninth origin try had it been given. Scrum. Scrum. 
10 metres out from the line, Luke O'Donnell's head came out. Jonathan Thurston pushed him away. Wally Let's Lewis sideline. Hayne must have got a call from upstairs because he was 10 or 12 metres back from that. A little bit of a lucky break for New South Wales, but they've had some pretty, uh, pretty talented defence over the last 15 or 20 minutes. Well, very fortunate there, New South Wales. They work it out now. And, and we find now who can play with their body, but also with their heads. That's how you win Origin. You play with your body, but what you win with your heads. Cray will play the ball just inside his own 30 metre line. Here's Heinmarsh. And he will play the ball 35 metres out from his own line. Kurt Gidley has gone into the game. The captain, that's him with the ball in 14. And it's captain on captain as Lockyer makes the tackle with some help there from Willie Thomas. Pierce gets a kick and it uh, is charged down by Costigan. Then it's batted back by the Blues. Costigan gets a hand to it. It's picked up by Morris for New South Wales. He's tackled on the 40 metre line. That was really lucky for New South Wales. That wouldn't have been six again until it was played at by a second maroon. Here they are coming across the ground and eventually finding Bo Scott on the right side of the ground. And Greg Inglis is there sweating on him and makes the tackle with uh, Ashley Harrison. Here's Gidley running short, gets the ball to Waterhouse. Waterhouse. Will play the ball on the 30 metre line, tackled by Cameron Smith. Gidley around the front of the man to play the ball. It's gone to Barrett, and Barrett is tackled 20 metres out, centre of the ground. 32 and a half minutes almost gone as the Blues attack the southern end of the ground. It's gone away now for Hay. He's in, away, got the ball away. Cooper was with it, but again the Maroons converge. And it's played by Cooper, Gidley, Pierce. Behind uh, Leroy Lars, it's gone away now to O'Donnell. He throws a pass to the back turn. Waterhouse did well. Scott's got the ball. And they are 20 metres out on five tackles. Played back to Monaghan. It's gone to the boot of uh, Trent Barrett. His kicking has been good tonight. Cray is underneath it, but look at the big fellow. Falau right up above the pack. And brings it down again. Lockyer, scooping it away for Fido. The Maroon defence is incredible. Even when they look stretched, there's Maroon jerseys coming from everywhere. They just do this origin thing so well. This is Tonga. He debuted, believe it or not, eight years ago, almost to the day, for Parramatta. Willie Tonga went on to play in a premiership winning side with Canterbury. Here's David Taylor now. Wrapped up by Leroy Lars. And in there helping out was Trent Barrett. And also the 17, Luke O'Donnell. So Smith, short side play, Thurston kicking, looking for the bounce, looking for the bounce. Cleaned up though by the number 14. I think he's got it back, Thurston, he has. Thurston will play the ball. 30 metres out from the line. Lockyer immediately onto the attack. He was away, Boyd's going on. Darius Boyd will put it down. He'll score, Darius Boyd. That is his fifth origin try. In his seventh origin game, the Dragon Winger, the Dragon fullback, I should say, has scored for the Maroons. And it's a very timely one after, well, the last 20 minutes, which has had a little bit of everything, but no points scored. This got them six again. Kurt Gidley coming across, couldn't get the football. It went back into the arms of Jonathan Thurston. And this left side defence, or well, right side for New South Wales, but the left side attack. Just all over the place. Players making wrong decisions. And Queensland making all the right decisions with ball in hand. The boy or the Boyd from Mudgery Bar. It seems like yes, just yesterday, he and Steve Michaels, who also comes from... The Mudgery Bar Redbacks are playing here for the Broncos. And then Darius went with Wayne Bennett to the Dragons. Darius Boyd, he's a polished player. Five tries at Origin, two test matches for Australia, won a grand final with Brisbane in 06. From Mudgery Bar Redbacks, Jonathan Thurston, 11 out. Centre ground. And this to make it 16. He gets it first and so Queensland. There might have been a period of what might have seemed like silence in action.
but they've changed that Wally sideline. Well, both Scott's done a wonderful job containing Greg Igler so far tonight for the Kino replay, but we see the first time that he wasn't in position was certainly a good time for Greg Inglis. Managed to call the ball, tipped it straight onto Darius Boyd, and that is a very important four points for Queensland. And that high shot there showed perfectly Darren Lockyer's vision. He was on the right-hand side. He saw the defence on the other side, the short side, in disarray for New South Wales, so he drifted across and he got the ball going that way. Another penalty goes to Queensland, and it's again against New South Wales being up inside the 10. Yeah, and they can smell blood in the water here, the Maroons. They're not finished yet. Still only three and a half minutes before the break, but that's going to seem like an age to a few tired blues out there who have spent a lot of their energy on emotion and physical work that haven't got their wits about them when the Queenslanders get the ball. The, the defence out on the edges is... Well, you can't describe it. 5-0, the penalties. Under the watch of these two referees over the last couple of years, Archer and Hayne, seven matches, I think it is, and the Blues have won the penalty count once. They're in all sorts here in New South Wales. They're in all sorts of trouble. Here's Lockyer across, in ball for Harrison. Harrison, he will play the ball 15 metres out from the New South Wales line. And here they come again, coming to this side where they've had some success. It's gone away to Slater, who's gone back the other side. And Friday runs the ball straight at Mitchell Pearce. The youngster did well. Pierce, uh, Smith puts a kick in. The rebound is back for play on. Friday away. Six more tackles indicated. Thurston gives it to Billy Slater. Slater invites them to come to him and then tries to put a sidestep together. Tackled by Leroy Love. Nine metres away from the Blues line. It's come away for Neville Costigan. Costigan barging towards the line. He'll play the ball two metres away. One of seven Dragons in the sides tonight. Lockyer for Harrison. Did Harrison lose the ball? Going to ground, yes he did. And the referee has applied the advantage rule and it's Monaghan who comes away for New South Wales. Well, it's been an action-packed first half, a big half-time coming up for the coach, Craig Bellamy, to try and resurrect the damage from this first 40 minutes. A big hello, too, to our viewers in regional areas through Win TV. Some of Nine's affiliates down there. Country people love their origin football, and they're getting a, a good dose of it tonight, although the Maroons are way on top on the scoreboard. First penalty of the game to the Blues. This, the pictures from Channel 9 going right around Australia. Sky Sports in New Zealand taking the telecast. Australia Network, Orbit Showtime and Satanta Africa taking the telecast through Asia Pacific, Middle East, Northern Africa and Central Africa, respectively. So 15 metres out from the Queensland line now. Can, can New South Wales register some points in the 61 seconds remaining? 10 metres out from the line. To the right side they come. Pierce drifting. And Hain tries to straighten. But they, the defence is waiting. Cameron Smith and Ashley Harrison. And Gidley dummies to the right. Turns it left. Barrett is with the ball. Fide is with him. And so it'll be played by Trent Barrett. Five metres away from the line. Again from Gidley. And then it's gone forward off Leroy Lars. And he'll get an advantage from it later. He brings it 12, 13 metres out from his own line. Well, the whole set of six was an ordinary set of six from the Blues. You, you just can't see the cohesion. You, you can't see exactly where it is they're trying to attack and whether they want to play inside, outside, long ball, short ball. They're sort of making it up as they go along, and that's what pressure can do to you. Here's Israel Falana, 32 metres away from his own line, half-time. Just a matter of seconds away in Queensland. Will take the 16 nil scoreline to the sheds with them. You know, one of the more daunting facts is that game two of the series has been played in Brisbane on nine occasions, and the Maroons have won seven. In fact, played anywhere. The Blues last won game two in 2005. 16 nil at half time. Coming up, Peter is joined by Wendell Saylor, Phil Gould, and Paul Horton to relive all of the first half highlights, plus the latest prices from TAB Sportsbet. And Queensland cricketing legend Matthew Hayden is here to launch this year's Ashes campaign. That's all next on Nine's Wide World of Sports. 
Welcome back, everybody, to State of Origin 2 for Harvey Norman. A scintillating and sometimes brilliant first half. Deflating for New South Wales, certainly. But are we watching the best ever? It's a question that keeps haunting me. And in a long time of commentary, I've seen Wally and his team, the Langers and the Miles and the Ningers, the Jackson, the Belchers and all of those people. But I'm wondering whether this might well be the best team ever for Queensland and at Origin. New South Wales have come from behind only five times in Origin history when travelling at half-time. Queensland, when they've led 32 times, 27 victories. I might add that New South Wales, when they have trailed and come from behind to win, the margin they were behind at half-time was never more than six. Just on that, as Darren leads Queensland out, are we witnessing a St George-style dynasty? The Maroons looking down the barrel of five straight. They're not there yet. And it is Origin, which is the home of miracles. But are they headed Queensland for a big 11 like the famous white jumper with the red V? Exactly 50 years later. Well, I don't see it stopping any time soon. And I think that the difference between the two teams, as we've seen the last two years, has been unbelievable. Wally Lewis is with Trevor Gilmeister. Yeah, lucky enough. Gilly, obviously, some Mel, uh, words from Mel Meninga at halftime. Obviously, uh, trying to make sure the players don't drop off. No, he's very happy at the moment, mate. He just said the only way they're going to win is if we invite them back into the game. Get our completions right. He wants to see a bit more support play, mate, and I reckon we'll score some more points. An almost faultless performance in the first half? Yeah, defence was unbelievable. One of the players kept turning up from nowhere, so hopefully we can do it in the second half. Thanks, Gilly. No worries, mate. There he is, the king with the axe. Talking of seeing all the good ones, he was an outstanding small forward who played many, many kilometres above his, or kilograms above his weight. Trevor Gilmeister. Well, he epitomise what Origin football is all about. And those little things that Queensland talk about, you know, support play, turning up for each other in defence, coming from nowhere. That's what they do so well. This is Thigh Day. In fact, I think Gilmeister came to the ground one night in an ambulance. They took him off uh, the drip, put him in an ambulance and brought him to the dressing room so that he could play. Well, that's the story Fatty told me, and he can exaggerate just a little. Here's Tonga. I know there's a few left from the opposition side in the ambulances. So, the kick down the ground by Queensland. A minute into the second half. And it's not just a hill that New South Wales have to climb. It is an Everest. 30 metres out from their own line, here's Brett Morris. And he will play the ball on his 40 metre line. Gidley. Never heard the referee saying, never, never, get out of it. That's never cost again. Told by Shane Hayne to keep out of it, stay out of it. Tackled by Taylor. It was O'Donnell tackled, and then Pierce goes across, and Leroy Lars takes a jamming tackle. David Shillington has come up with some absolute bell ringers tonight, and two in a row there. And both the blokes he hit got up and just shook their heads at him. Now the Queenslander Costigan may have hurt himself here. He's he's hurting, but he's not going to try and show it too much. And Barrett puts a kick over the top, and it's fielded by Cameron Smith. And Smith is taken by three of the Blues. 25 out from the Queensland line. That's a speculator, isn't it? Yeah. So from Thurston, it goes to Greg Inglis and Ben Cray's hanging around the legs there, trying to stop this 16 and a half stoner. And here's Israel Falau. He and Greg are approximately the same height, about 6'5", and they tip the scales at around the 16 and a half stone. Lockyer back for Thigh Day, and Thigh Day is met by Mitchell Pearce and Ben Cray. They drive in with Matt Cooper coming in over the top. So we're on the halfway line now, Queensland at 16-0 at the 42nd minute of the game. Thurston fights Taylor. Taylor backs his way down the ground. He evades another. Did he throw a forward pass to Greg Inglis? Inglis takes it down to the 10 metre line. So Greg Inglis, slow to play the ball. Is he wounded? Taylor dummy half. The kick from Lockyer across the ground. Thurston. Here's Slater after the ball. It came off Slater. Went to Tonga. Tonga put the ball down. Willie Tonga, I fancy, has scored his second origin try. And 
Origin, origin try are the two words most prominent in that description from Ray Warren. Because there is so much origin about this, it doesn't matter. The never give up chase of Billy Slater, but watch where Tonga comes from to score. Slater goes in there, watch Tonga chase his man in and run past Blues players to come up with a loose ball. Slater never give up, taps it back, and Tonga will come from behind two Blues players to snap it up and score. That's an origin moment right there. And that's the difference between New South Wales and Queensland. And that's the only thing the video referee could be looking at. But Billy Slater has knocked that one back. It's, it's a brilliant pickup from Willie Tonga on the fly. That's a great pickup, and he takes a little bit of time to get the ball down, but in the movement and motion of the tackle, he's able to put it down despite the attention of Matt Cooper. And the kick was good. The kick was designed to arrive the same time as the chaser did. It's a try for Willie Tonga, his second celebration. I told you earlier in the telecast, he debuted almost on this day. Eight years ago for Parramatta, which is something that a lot of people forget these days. Willie Tonga comes from Sherborg. Actually, he was born in Canberra, but he played juniors with Sherborg, of course, the home of Chris Sando. And he debuted exactly eight years ago for Parramatta. Two years later, went to Canterbury and did the lap of honour in a grand final. Thurston converts Wally Lewis sideline. And the opportunity was provided a little bit earlier. A nice big bust from Dave Taylor up the middle and the Keno replay shows him putting Queensland into an absolutely perfect position. It did look like they, uh, they were able to put some pressure on New South Wales, but a kick is only good as it chases. And let me just point out to the kids at home, the athleticism by Billy Slater. He should be able to claim that try by himself. Here's one show you really don't want to miss. Underbelly, the Golden Mile. There's only two weeks left to run. And the last two episodes are some of the best Aussie television you'll see all year. Nine's Underbelly, the Golden Mile. Half past eight on Sunday night. 20 metre line then for Queensland. And the pass was just on the line for Costigan to run off Cameron Smith. Wally Lewis paying a tribute there to Billy Slater. He's right up there with the very best fullbacks this game has ever, ever produced. I threw that in the ring a couple of years ago and I, I'm happy to throw it in again. I haven't seen one better. 22 nil the score and Pat Rafter, one of the great Australians. Watching with Wimbledon, we're on the eve of Wimbledon. You'll see that exclusively on the Night Network. Hayne makes a mistake. Who's there to get it? Slater! But the referee has ruled turnover. Well, there might have been an early touch here from a Queensland player, although the Maroons are blowing up, saying no way. Who's right for Lau? No, it comes off Jared Hayne first. How did they come up with this? I don't know. I don't know. It was, I thought, a Hayne mistake, if you like, or a knock on, and who was there to pick it up with Slater? Here's the ball going across the line. The referee has called it forward. Yeah, knocked on there anyway by Ben Cray playing wide to the right. See, this is the other thing I don't understand too, Peter. You know, I don't want to get too critical as this goes on because the Maroons. They're going to put him to the sword here, but Kurt Gidley, your captain, starts from the bench. When he gets into the game, he gets into the dummy half position, so he's out of position. Your main hooker that you've selected for origin is on the bench. It, it, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. In fact, there was a disservice there to Ben Crow. It was actually Joel Monaghan coming in to hit that up. As Queensland win the scrum, they go to the short side. It's Greg Inglis. So 23 metres up from the Blues line. Played by Inglis over there, Taylor loving that role of being at first receiver and distributor. And then Cameron Smith 
15 out from the line. Queensland at 22 to nil now. It comes to the right side for Harrison to run a play towards the centre of the ground. Nine metres away from the line. Playing it for his hooker. It goes back to Thurston. The seven goes behind the decoy. Here's Lockyer. out. Let's try. They go, oh, what a play. What a play by Lockyer. And in he goes again. Israel Folau. Oh, what about Lockyer? That was just the hands of a surgeon almost. Well, it's beautiful work and awareness by Darren Lockyer. The ability to change this pass to enable the try scorer to score as Brett comes off a New South Wales mistake, shapes the pass and then gets the right ball across. They're having a picnic, the wide men. Oh. Well, we... we previewed the match with a, a very big tribute to Darren Lockyer. I'm just wondering where, if we had a top ten, where would he be? One of them's on the sideline tonight. Israel Folau. So Israel Folau has brought his try record at Origin Football up to the mark now it's seven from seven for israel Folau. well it was a brilliant task by darren lockyer but again the blues defense out on the outside appeared clueless and really made it for him and then the great player picked them off but he must be giggling at what's going to happen in the next 31 minutes here the only thing that will stop this avalanche of points is queensland getting tied Thurston from sideline, coming back, and it's there ever so accurately. Wally Lewis. And once again, the Queenslanders allowed to dictate terms. I agree with Gus. That was very poor reading from the New South Wales defence on the Keno replay. You see Lockyer simply moving across the field. The player's out of position. Brett Morris was probably in a completely different position than he would be if he was playing for the Dragons. Queensland simply dictating terms. Well, again, there, the defenders, while he's going up past where the ball is, you, you just can't do that as Shillington brings it back. Ray, what, what is a bit scary, Cameron Smith's been brilliant tonight, Billy Slater's been brilliant. Darren Lockie has actually overshadowed Jonathan Thurston tonight. It's probably been a relatively quiet game for the number seven by his standards. But Lockyer tonight, he's really taken control and, and been the number one man. That's why the halfback's playing so well, Peter. They're getting plenty of ball. He knows who's carving them up. He's, there's no need for Thurston to, to get in their way. It's one of the pluses, you know, through this, what now we can almost talk about, this five feet. Here's Thide going back for Thurston. And he'll be forced to play the ball just on his own side of the halfway. That structure, that network, that vital network, it's been together for so long. The Smiths and the Thurstons, the Lockyers and the Slaters. In fact, I think eight of these players played right through the series last year. Eight of the 17. The Blues have only got two such players. Well, Ray, we'll learn a lot about the New South Wales players out there in this last half hour. Some players out there who will be looking to play a lot more origin in the future. A lot of that will be determined by how, how much character they show in the next 30 minutes and how they finish this game off. This is Trent Waterhouse, taken to ground on the 40-metre line. Queensland's into the ground, has come away to Mitchell Pearson, gone to Trent Barrett, inside ball, Leroy Lars. Big Tom from Farrah Agriculture up at Tamra. And now it's gone to Mitchell Pearson, he puts a kick high. Plenty of chase time, and oh, it's come down and bounced off the shoulder of Falau. It's play on for Slater. And Trent Barrett it was who who made the attempt to come down with it, or at least cause some palpitation for Queensland. And this is Falau again. What a build-up to this game. When they say a build-up, it was a controversial build-up. But of course, Israel wasn't going to be picked. Now he was picked. Yes, he'll play. And hasn't he had an impact? But of course, this has been a game really made for him, designed for him. Shillington with the ball now. Yeah, quite a lead-up, Ray. There might be a bit of collateral damage coming out of it at the other end as well. So Costigan, Fide, Barrett, went up, met him in the face, and then combined with O'Donnell to put Fide down. 
Sam Fider having a wonderful year. A kick from Smith grubbing its way down. And Hayne comes off his 20 metre line. Off his right foot. Just inside Lockyer, but he's pulled down by Tonga. And Brett Morris, a dummy half, is held by the ankle by Costigan. Throws it back and says to Jared Hayne, you have a go. He's pulled down by Thayday and Costigan crawling across the ground. Short ball to Mitchell Pearce. And he'll play the ball. Solid tackle, hard tackle by, again, that man Shillington. And here's Kirk Gidley up the middle, getting it back to Luke O'Donnell. And O'Donnell will play the ball. Nine metres into Queensland's area. Gidley, Barrett, Barrett, Pierce, Pierce, inside, Heinmarsh. And Nathan throws the pass. And uh, Ingles picks it up. And didn't quite have time to set the compass. He's forced down. That was the pass. Nathan Heinmarsh deciding it's time to start squeezing them. We're back here on Friday night with a massive double header. First up at half past seven, it's the Broncos and the Panthers. I'll just come back to that, the kick through, the grubber, and who's after it? Slater's after it, and it's dived on back there by Joel Monaghan. Was there still movement? Did he force him in goal? What's the referee going to say? He's given a penalty to the Blues against Slater for having a second dip at the man who, whose momentum was deemed to have stopped. That's the only way I can describe it. Well, it's an interesting call. Monaghan will win the race of the ball and he slides there and Slater gives it to him and pushes him in goal. I, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. He might have penalised him for a little push in the back there. Don't, don't they say that in that situation, as soon as the man, the defender touches the man, he's tackled? A man on the ground. Yeah. A man on the ground and the ball or the arm carrying the ball touches the ground. You've only got to put a hand on him and that's a tackle. So if he's in the field of play, as soon as he's touched, he has to remain in the field of play. I would so that's why the penalty is awarded. Okay, well, there it is from another one of the great men. <laughs> oh, just oh, dropping it. <laughs> no, no, I, no I, I appreciate your help, and it's your birthday, so I can't argue with you. Lost by the Blues, adding to the problem. Scott picked it up, but Tony Archer. Hello, this is Bo Scott and Matthew Scott. Yeah, Bo Scott and Matthew Scott. They've decided that the namesakes should get involved in this. Sam Thiday's been the protector tonight. He's, he's been first into every melee. He comes from anywhere. As soon as it looks like a maroon might be outnumbered. Very much playing the enforcer role. Oh, Wayman. He might have had a little sneak look there. Oh, gee, he took one too without the ball from English. Look at the size of Inglis, and he just, he's put a bloke 114 kilos on his back. This is what happened after that. Bo Scott and Matthew Scott. Scott to Scott and Scott back to Scott. Great Scott. Yeah, great Scott. So here is Matthew Scott again. It's almost like the match will be played at Scottsville. Now it's gone away to Tonga, and Tonga turns it back inside for Falau, and Falau will play the ball. I'll get back to Friday night in just a moment, but Friday goes into first receiver nothing doing so he just says i'll pinch a few meters straight ahead and now cooper cronk is on and what a delightful player he is he'll play the ball on the 30 meter line away it goes to smith and now to shillington and shillington it's the first time since 01 that the queenslanders have taken the field in origin without steve price and petro seven receiver as a pair Here's Friday running off a lock your ball. And these are the youngest front row combination for Queensland since I think 1997. Tina and O'Brien from memory. Here's the kick by Lockyer. It's a chance. Up goes Israel. He flicks it back, but he finds Mitchell Pierce. Oh, how high can he fly? Oh, he's up in the jet stream. So the Blues coming away from their own 10-metre line. Well, great shot there, Matt Scott and Trent Barrett just rocked him back again. We're almost an hour into this game and still physically hitting hard. There's another one, ball popped out the back, loose. That's pressure from the Oh, they've won the race for the ball, Cooper Cronk. They weren't really entitled to do that. As Thurston now tries to, to hurt them and capitalise on it. And he finds Inglis, and Inglis marked up there by... 
Bo Scott and Joel Monaghan. Played 10 metres out from the line. There's a punch up in back play. There's a punch up in back play as it goes to Matthew Scott. It's starting to get bigger, this uh, melee over there on the eastern side of the ground. Now it's been quelled. Yeah, it's Greg Inglis and Bo Scott, I think you find. They've been at it all night. I know who's got the biggest smile on their face. And we'll go back and see what's sort of out. We've got all three officials on the field at the moment. In fact, we've got four. Our touch judge has come in. No, I haven't. The crowd did react over in that I'm corner. Trying, Once they go up, you know something's untoward is happening. Well, Greg Inglis gets penalised here because he throws the first punch. He, he didn't have any right to hold on to both Scott. Yeah. Well, that's a penalty straight away. Yeah, Scott's tried yeah. to get away from him and, and Inglis has thrown the first punch. You can't yeah. touch the marker. Now, I think I just heard Tony Archie say that Inglis... Uh, that Scott was the aggressor. Well, how is he the aggressor? He's well, trying, to, uh, well, he's we'll trying to chop his arm away just from about, his jumper. We're just about to find out. You chop down, you threw the first punch. Just settle it down, mate. Oh, I told you. I spoke to Trent before. You just can't You chopped down, down and threw the first punch. Well, that's wrong. Well, do you reckon he threw the first punch? Well, I think he did, Rabbits. OK. I think he did. You need to keep a cool head. Inglis no, had no right to be holding right. on to him. Don't and what react. he did was slap at his arm. Is that a punch? No, he slapped at his arm and then Inglis wouldn't let go, so then he threw the punch. He was the aggressor. Trust me, baby. I'd like to have another look. Oh, well, you're right again, it seems. I wouldn't mind having another look myself. No, I've got time now. Here we go. Thurston. All right, thank you. Here's Thurston and then Matthew Scott charging to the 10-metre line. I just want odds on next try score. 15 metres out from the Blues line. Played by Matthew Scott. And here is Ashley Harrison taking it to the middle and set, set themselves up on both sides of the ground. Thurston and Lockyer are to the right. Thurston went from the right to the left. He took a couple with him and Lockyer went, went to ground with the ball five metres out from the line. Cameron Smith looking around, counting numbers, looking for 5A, 5A looking for Slade up and there's a nice piece of play. Here's Falau, but it's gone forward. Little set play, ends up in a forward pass, probably a little close to the line to do it. Let's go back and we'll look at Bo Scott here. And I think as Inglis gets up to play the ball, he's holding on to Scott. Now, Scott will slap at his arm, and Inglis won't let go. Now he'll throw one and hit him on the chin. And then Inglis retaliates. Now, really, what instigated it was, was that Inglis was holding on to him. But Bo Scott, who gave him a chance to let go, then tried to knock his arm away, and said, if you're not going to let go, I'll pin you. And he got penalised. I think in the end, Inglis kind of gained, he threw the better punch. Ball goes to ground. Queensland embracing one another. Put down by both Scott. Well, there's not much footy being played at the moment, is there? It's uh, a bit of a drop of thumb when New South Wales have got it, and it's just a matter of time before Queensland score again, and all that's being interrupted by the odd little brouhaha as players sort each other out and get square for other indiscretions that we may or might not have seen during the game. It's all a bit untidy at the moment. He's got a giant headache. You've got all those words down, Pat Gus, Gus uh, Mele, Fraka, Bruhaha. Now it's come to the right side. Slater joins in. Tonga was looking for it, but he might have just got a little check in running. And Slater will play the ball 10 metres away from the Blues line. It's gone from Cooper Cronk. It's gone out of Friday. And he tries to steamroll across the top of the New South Wales player, who I don't know as well. It's in yellow boots, who's that? A lot of concern here from Cameron Smith in particular. Uh, it's Kurt Gidley. This is the skipper defending in an unusual role. He's been put on at hooker. He doesn't play hooker for his club. He doesn't defend at hooker for his club. But he's in there tackling big front rowers head on and doing his best for his team. And with the fellow club coming, gets his head down the wrong side, gets a knee on the jaw and... That's what happens when you're not used to defending in those positions. It was a fearsome sight head on, wasn't it? Oh, that gosh. camera shot of, of Sam Tidey coming. Kurt Gidley setting himself. He's as brave as anyone in this game. But have a look at this. Look at his face. Freight train coming. Oh, at you. Oh, 
And you ain't got nowhere to go. No, where can I hide? Well, that's what they're good at, the big blokes. So see how he just zeroed in on the little bloke. First and across wide for Lockyer. Lockyer back inside ball. Inglis. And Inglis is seven metres out from the line. Leroy Lars and Gallon, the tacklers. They come right side. Cronk goes in. Shillington goes up the middle. Thinks about a pass. The Blues put him away. Well, again, John Monaghan was past the ball on that left side. They'll kick sometime soon. Here's One Smith going short to Cronk, and he dummies and goes, and Cronk is in. Cooper Cronk has scored. Cooper Cronk. Half of the year in 2006. He's deputised for Jonathan Thurston a number of times. He's worn the Australian colours before the Maroon colours. And he has scored his first origin points. And I think he's just got a roving commission out there because Jonathan Thurston is out, Darren Lockyer's out there, Billy Slater's off there. A little man off the bench. And he's just going wherever he wants, and that time it was over the try line. Well, he might celebrate. He becomes the most successful coach of all Queensland coaches. Arthur Beetson and Wayne Bennett, they won four series. So Mal goes to five. Queensland's biggest winning margin is 30 points, by the way. 36-6-89. Cooper Cronk, the Melbourne halfback, has played half for Australia. Before he wore the maroon, he wore the green and gold. Four from five tonight for the man who Cooper has deputised for a number of times. So 22 metres out from almost in front for Jonathan Thurston, Brad Fittler sideline. It's just a juggernaut. It keeps coming. It's just only good enough side of the New South Wales side to carry that five-year burden hanging over their head. Their heads are down. They're doing it tough. Somehow we're going to find something in this last 16 minutes. Here's Cooper Cronk just watch his determination. He digs down, he puts his head in an uncomfortable position. We need to find some. It just reminded me of something that's also scary, Brad Fiddler. There are 16 minutes to go. And Queensland's biggest, biggest winning margin is 30. 34 nil at the moment, 36-6 and 89. 36-6 in 2003, 30 nil in 2008. What might this be? Matthew Scott with the ball, playing it on the 40-metre line. Cameron Smith sweeping it. Lockyer gives it on. Five day. Well, he just doesn't stop, does he? Everything he does is with intensity, urgency. Puts his hand up, and he's as he's as tough as an old boot. My goodness, he's a good player. This fella, Sam Fide, to the 30-metre line. Fifth tackle then for the Maroons. A little bit of a dust up in the back play from Friday and Ennis. So it goes high and up. Go well, I thought for a moment Hayne would leap, but it was Cooper Cronk high above Hayne, and Hayne stayed on the ground and snuffed it out, defused the attack. It's great Aussie drama, rescue special ops. It starts Monday week, and this time they'll discover even heroes have limits. Which one of them won't make it out alive? That's the question. Find out in the new season. It starts Monday week. The rescue special ops. Halfway line for Leroy Lars. Centre ground. 34 nil. And 15 to go. Trent Barrett. Telling Paul Gallon to come with me. His Cronulla teammate, come with me. And Gallon's going to go on with this, and the referee has said, you can. He got a ball away for Leroy Lars again. In fact, it's uh, it's Brett White who's back out there. And Barrett puts a kick in. He puts a shot down that right side, and it was all over the place for Darius Boyd. He's been told to play on. He left the field of play to mark the ball. Otherwise, it would have been a 20. The referee was exactly right. New South Wales chase has dropped off. His foot was trailing in the field of play. As Israel Folau out of dummy half now, Big Fen gets rid of one. It's inside his own 20. Rabbits, I'm wondering how many blokes are sitting at home in the NRL tonight, in their lounge rooms with their families, watching this game. 
who are New South Wales players thinking, I could do better than this. Because unless they've got some blokes sitting at home thinking to themselves, I can do better than this, this dynasty won't stop for a long time. There's, there's got to be blokes in lounge rooms now saying, give me a jersey. Big game for this fellow. Dave Shillington. Huge game. Massive effort. Massive frame. But that was indelible what he's done tonight. Just got mixed up a bit there. The, the halves rushing past. Last tackle went to ground. I remember Dave Shillington was a very young man and I was coaching the reserve grade at the Roosters for the weekend. We were playing a team at Newdown and Newdown had a tough tack and it was his first ever reserve grade game and I sent him out there and he came off with a bleeding nose and I said, have a drink, mate, I'm going to send you out there again. And he went out and he came back with another bleeding nose. And he went back the third time. Well, a few of them left the field and they were bleeding from everywhere. And so I think we've got a good one. Oh, Bat took one right under the ribcage. And Falau is away with the drop ball and he'll... He's lost the ball. It's a penalty. There were two in the tackle. Cooper came up with the ball. He and Morris were in the tackle, according to the referee. And it's a strip. Two in the tackle. Yeah, we see that. It's hard not to take the ball if, if it's there. One bloke who hasn't been out there and I don't think will come out for the rest of this game is Nate Miles. He was busted early in this and obviously Melvin Ingram has seen no sense in putting him back out with the scoreline the way it is. You won't be happy, Nate Miles, but it's, it's a decision looking after his welfare. Ben Hammond, 10 metres out from the line. The Mexican wave has started. And now it goes to Matthew Scott, who charges towards that grandstand down at the southern end. Played back for Cameron Smith. Swept away, bullet like to Lockyer. Harrison runs the play. Back to the middle. Arm hasn't touched the ground. Now it has. He'll play a 10 away from the line. Smith, a go himself. Cronk, the Melbourne teammate, goes with him. And thinks about maybe number two. Here's Smith. He puts a little kick in. Inglis was after it, but I think he was in front of the kicker anyway. 34 nil with 11 and a half minutes to go. We had to rush that one, Cameron Smith, because uh, the defence got up on him pretty quick and he just kicked it too hard. But they've got it on a string at the moment. It's, uh, it's like you're watching a training session. Hindmarsh back into the game. Leroy Lars pulled down 35 metres out from his line. Dave Taylor about to come back into it. It's a bad sign when you're at the footy and the, the home crowd's doing the Mexican wave with 10 minutes to go. You, you know you're in trouble. Oh, Mitchell Pearce, a no-look pass, and it went quickly. It went snappily out to Cooper. Cooper down the left side, and he's been put into touch by Israel Folau. And he's done his hamstring, I think. Oh, no. I think he's done his hamstring. He grabbed, it's either cramp or hamstring. He grabbed at it very, very quickly as he was bundled over the sideline. He looked to fall awkwardly. And this is bad news. You watch this. He gets pushed. Yeah, it's just hyperextended there, I think, on that knee. And he grabbed his hamstring very, very quickly. And that's bad news for, uh, for Matty Cooper. Falau pushes him. And he just, yep, yep. It goes right there. There's a hyperextension there for sure. So. Oh. He's had his share of bad luck. In fact, he's had far too much. Biggest margin in or origin history, 40 points. Will they make that? 56-16 in 2000. New South Wales beating Queensland, 56-16. 40 points. Matt Cooper injured. No further part for him tonight. And a really worrying injury for the Dragon Centre. For all concerned there. Played by Tonga. And Kurt Gidley has come from the bench and moved to left centre. His Friday. The fifth championship in a row. Oh, Heading Relax. for Queensland. First Relax. time in origin history, obviously, given that they set the bar themselves last year. I hope they present the trophy to them tonight, the shield. I hope so they, do I. I hope they get to do the victory lap with the shield and not wait till game three in Sydney. They deserve that in front of their home fans. Kick from uh, Lockyer came back to Lockyer. It came from Thurston's boot and back to Lockyer. It's play on. 
And they're 30 metres out centre of the ground. The Maroons, Thurston starts to generate. The ball goes to ground. Cronk got a, a hand to it, got it away to Boyd. Boyd away to Inglis. Inglis runs a half circle, puts a monster of a kick across the ground. Back towards Israel for now. He jumps high. He throws it out the back and it's gone in the touch. Well, well, would that have been a try? <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. They can do what they like, can't they? From one side of the field to the other, English to Falau and kick and pass and catch. What's the story on Matt Cooper, Brad? Have you got a, an update? Yeah, man, it looks like he's left hamstring. He was grabbing his knee, but Tony A, the physio, just said he might have a lot of problems with his hamstring, mate. You can put a line through Matt Cooper this weekend. They take on the Sharks on Sundays. New South Wales go wide. Bo Scott, nice little move there on Jonathan Thurston, but he's taken by Darius Boyd in his own 40. And Friday, as I said to you earlier, or I tried to tell you earlier, a massive double header here at Suncorp as Pierce throws the pass. It's come out to Morris. And Morris, oh, he's taken down. The ball went to ground, knocked on by Lockyer. First up at 7.30 on Friday, Broncos and Panthers. And then the dogs take on the Titans. That'll be big here Friday night, the double header. You'll see it on nine. I'm pretty sure too that between 2002 and 2005, New South Wales went four years without losing a series, three years, three wins and a draw. And during that four years, I think there was something like seven or eight Queensland players who were still in the Queensland side when they won four years in a row. Now that's perseverance. I mean, when you can go four years without winning an Origin series and, and retain the nucleus. The, the, the nucleus of your side and, and trust them that they'll develop, that's where this Queensland side has been built on patience and, and loyalty. And New South Wales over the last four years of losing series, well, I, I've lost count of the number of players I've used. I'll just come back to, to you on that very subject in a moment as Gallon is wrapped up and put away. 28 metres out from the Queensland line. 34 nil with under seven minutes to go. And 40 points is the biggest winning margin by either team in 89 Origins or 88 played. As Leroy Lars plays it now and Ennis gives it on for Barrett to give it across to O'Donnell and O'Donnell plays the ball and it's picked up by Ennis. Here's a chance for the Blues to find some respectability on the scoreboard maybe it's kicked ahead by morris it went through the legs of gidley it's been touched down and uh, archie wants to look at it it might be a try that all looked pretty good i think you're fine all intricate work down this left hand side the short side trent barrett went through as a decoy got a bit of a shoulder the ball i believe was passed back quickly by jared hain and brett morris picked it up booted it through it was quick enough to get there. We'll have a better look at it now. Come down this short side, across Michael Ennis. Barrett back on the inside, gets a bit of treatment. This pass from Jared Hain has gone backwards. So Brett Morris picks it up, sums it up, kicks it through, and gets there first. Now, what now they'll look at here is, is Gidley. Gidley was in an offside position, and he may get in the way of Slater, who's trying to retreat after the ball. See, technically, Slater is, uh, Gidley is offside as soon as Morris kicks the ball. But as Slater goes to retreat, he'll run yeah, straight no in try. to Gidley, who's offside. No and try. They'll, be, they'll be denied here. They'll be denied because Gidley has come into the play. Yep. No try and correctly called. The replays showing that an offside player has impeded the attempt to defend by Queensland's fullback. Well, this would be a great shot of it. There you can see Billy Slater. He would have just about, well, whether he had the speed to get there or not, he was denied an opportunity. And the faithful Blues praying for points, but even they were denied. Look at the completion rates in this game. New South Wales have only had 26 opportunities with the ball in 75 minutes. Now that is that is extraordinarily low. Normally you'll have 20 opportunities each half, probably 40, 44 in a game. 
They've only had 26 opportunities with the ball in 75 minutes and only completed 16 sets of those. On the other hand, Queensland have got their 35 shares and completed 27. And you take out the stoppages for the Malays and the Fracars and the Brouhahas. Yes. Um, the mountain of possession that Queensland have controlled is, is quite extraordinary. 62% dominance of possession over New South Wales. Thurston then. Tennant on an inside passage. Gus, you mentioned those players sitting at home and it's going to come into the future for New South Wales as Darren Lockyer shaped to, to kick. Last tackle here. For me, Mitchell Pearce has done plenty tonight. I think he's just about being New South Wales' best defender. If he can come up against a retreating defence, we'll see more from him in attack. But one thing out of this game, in my belief for New South Wales, is that They've got a number seven who, there who, who should be there for many seasons to come. Well, can I say this, Peter? He's got to be there to develop. He's not ready for Origin now. And I said that before he was selected. He wasn't certainly wasn't ready two years ago. And he's not ready yet. But I said, if you're going to pick him, you've got to leave him there for two or three seasons and take your lumps early and, and maybe he'll develop in the position as time goes on. He's, he's certainly the best of the young options coming through for New South Wales. Talk about those players sitting at home who think they'd like to be in this blue jersey tonight. And I don't know who they are. Only they know who they are. I don't know what they're thinking, but I would hope that there are some sitting back there thinking they'd like a shot at this. Trent Barrett has slogged his body almost to a standstill. Debuted at 18, Trent Barrett, for the water in 96. And debuted at Origin the very next year. He's been a wonderful contributor to the game. To the game of rugby league. First and sweeping it in, Taylor had it. Came out of his grasp and Inglis pops on it, but the referee is calling a standstill. This crowd, 52,452. I don't know that they can get any more in here. What is the capacity here? Is anybody... I think that's it. That's it, isn't it? That's the ground record. 52,449. And uh, three that have found their way in and we're looking for them. There might be a few sitting on laps out there as well. There might be a few more. Anyway, it's well done, Queensland, and well done to you people who have travelled so far to be here to support New South Wales and all of you people from the Sunshine State that have made the trek many miles to be here to watch your champion side. And I say that without any fear of contradiction. A champion side, five gold medals to them. And it's a side that led 16-0 at half-time. And they won the second half 18 points to nil. And we've got a strip against Queensland here. We come into the uh, two minutes in just a moment. As Michael Ennis kicks the ball out, Mel Meninga's even got time to sign a sign in his honour. That's the thing about Brisbane too. It's been the rugby league capital of Australia for the last three or four seasons, in, in, in our opinion. And what we've been coming here for rep games and club games. It's a crying shame they don't have two teams in the Brisbane area. They're going over, they're going over. Touchdown! Scored by the front row forward, Brett White. It's come late. Mitchell Pierce going to the defensive line. The inside pass. Normally you see a flying fullback or winger coming in to help. Well, this time on Mitchell Pierce's inside. It was Brett White who just had a little bit too much pace for Ben Hannon coming across in cover. Well, he finds himself in the spotlight again at the back end of an origin at Suncorp for all the different reasons this time. Brett White, youngster from Coombe, played some football for the Dragons. He scores a try at origin level. And I don't know whether it does put much more respectability in the scoreboard, but it would be satisfying to think that you haven't come up with a duck egg. He's got himself an origin try. Yeah, he'll remember it. You're talking about continuity of players. Put them there, leave them there, let them get to know each other, all the rest of it. Eight of Queensland's current 17 played in all three games last year. And I could go back with more figures than that where a lot of these players, the class of 06, four of these players have been in this side 
that I can see that started in 06. Yeah. So they've been there shoulder to shoulder, brother to brother. And, and you were talking about Mitchell Pearce. Well, I'm wondering whether that applies that same thinking to Jamal Idris. Well, he lasted a week. I'm making the point. Yeah, he lasted You're talking a week. about picking young blokes and they're being picked too early, and you've got to leave them there, then he must fit into that same category. Here is the ball going across the line to Joel Monaghan. He puts a kick across in the dying seconds of the game. And the ball appropriately finishes with Darren Lockyer. Well, have we seen his final appearance at origin level on home soil? I don't think so. I think he'll do it again next year. 34 to 6, Queensland have won it. They've won the series five times the champions. A great side. A really great side.